Welcome to Money Talk with Aaron Ricketts, presented by Ricketts, Ricketts & Associates, 3245 North Adrian Highway, Suite L. The opinions voiced on Money Talk are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial, or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial Member FINRA SIPC. Welcome back to another edition of Money Talk. And Aaron's with us in the studio. Hey, Aaron. Hey, John. Okay, we need to talk about something that uh, is very important when, uh, yes. unfortunately, when people get into retirement ages, uh, they can have some health problems and they need to look at some options. Right. Talking about long term care. And how much do we really know about long-term care? And this is one of those conversations that uh, when I meet with clients and I'm, you know, I, I have a little presentation that I do or, you know, I kind of go through, you know, some numbers and go through uh, steps and maybe in the process uh, of a standard process of a person that needs long-term care. And it seems like a year later, you know, when I meet with that client uh, from the last time I had that conversation, we have to talk about it again because it's complex, it's ever-changing, and it's important enough where uh, some people, um, it causes them a lot of stress and sleepless nights, especially when they see a loved one, um, maybe call it slipping, uh, you know, maybe uh, not uh, who they were, you know, a year before or five years before, and then they start really getting concerned about how does this work and um, what? How can I do this by myself? Well, I certainly uh, help and our office helps people uh, get to the elder law attorneys. That's one big thing. Uh, have that conversation because they know the law and what the rules are about uh, spending and, you know, costs and, and what the Medicaid rules are, all that. So let's just talk about um, it's like a true and false or um, oh, okay, a question. Here we right? go. <laughs> so we'll see if you can uh, get a couple right here. <laughs> okay, a couple. I think you'd be all right. <laughs> I might give you, okay, one wink is uh, <laughs> true. <laughs> okay, true or false. Medicare will pay for your mom or dad's nursing home care. Medicare. False. False is correct because Medicare is not long-term care insurance. It's short-term health care insurance is what it is. You know, you have part A, part B, maybe a supplement, and then your prescription coverage. So part A is what caused, uh, or, um, that pays for your uh, medical, in-hospital medical care. You know, when you're in the hospital for more than, let's say, 24 hours. Well, um, Medicare will pay that hospital stay, but at some point when you're not getting any better or you need rehabilitation, they, uh, the hospitalists, I say they, uh, the, somebody at the hospital says, you know, the insurance isn't going to cover this anymore. So uh, this day, this person has to leave the hospital. And then guess what? They go to long-term care. Now, it's very possible that Medicare will pay uh, for some rehabilitation services, but at some point, if it's in a long-term care facility, they're not going to keep paying. And there is a time frame, and you've probably heard 100 days. And um, I tell people that 100 days is very hard to get to. Very few people use up that entire 100 days. It's often 10 days, if that. So keep that in mind. Uh, Medicare, just on its face, does not pay for uh, dad's nursing home care. Just keep that in mind. So true or false? semi-private room in a nursing home costs about $35,000 a year. False. False is correct. In our area right here, and um, I have some personal um, knowledge of this family member that is in a care facility, uh, they pay about $250, $255 a day. All right. So $250 a day is about $90,000 a year. So, um, 35,000 is, you know, would be a, a discount, right? <laughs> right. Now, 35,000 a year might cover, uh, assisted living care, 
but even assisted living care runs about $4,000 to $5,000 a month. If you need a high level of assisted living care, it's going to run you $5,000 to $6,000. Uh, and everybody's situation is different. I just want to make sure that these numbers I'm giving you is, um, uh, you know, is like an average or, you know, what I have seen uh, for care for clients and, of course, my own family. Okay, true or false, about 40% of today's 65-year-olds will eventually need long-term care, 40%. True. It's false. I knew I'd miss one. Oh, I think you just threw that one. Uh, <laughs> you didn't want to be perfect. Uh, that is not true. One-fifth are projected to require uh, long-term care for an extended period of time, about one-fifth. Now, it is possible that somebody will go into a long-term care facility for a rehab, but they're not there for a long period of time, even though it's called uh, long-term care. And uh, it, it's becoming more common um, where people are getting taken care of at home. There's a lot more uh, in-home services out there, which I hear are great. We have a few here in the county that um, I hear great uh, feedback from clients, and also I sit on the... Uh, the VA board here in town, the Veterans Administration, and I hear great things from those people there about the care that's given uh, in this county. Department of Aging, um, hospice, there's a lot of good care right here that we have. We're very lucky uh, to live in Lenaway when, you know, we take care of, you know, our, our elderly and those that uh, need that care. So our next true and false question the earlier you buy long-term care insurance, the less expensive it is. That better be true. It better be true. <laughs> right. Because most time when you're younger, you don't need long-term care or your, um, um, your needs or there's fewer need for younger people. Uh, and you go to a long-term term care facility, there's very few young people in that long-term care facility. Okay. The one thing I... I I'm not going to get into the insurance side of it and debate the uh, pros and cons of buying insurance or not buying insurance. I have my own opinions, and I talk to people about that in my office and uh, give them my two cents worth, and people want direction, so I give them that direction. The main thing I tell people is there is a lot of information out there about long-term care. To me, it is well worth a couple hundred dollars to sit down with the elder law attorney that's, you know, for their time, for that hour that they're going to speak with you and get that information from the attorney. Those that specialize in uh, elder care go to the continuing education programs that the state has, that the, the bar association has. They have to go and get, the, you know, a certain amount of credits, just like I do on the financial side. Go to those people that are experts in, in that. And if you want a referral, call my office. I got a few that I use that I talk to. <clears throat> and I have uh, great confidence in them. And if I didn't, I wouldn't refer. So if you have any questions, call my office, 265-3540, and I'll give you a referral for a, an elder law attorney. True or false, Medicaid can pay nursing home costs. Medicaid. True. True is correct. Matter of fact, that is often the conversation I have with people because we want always want somebody else to pay our bill, right? <laughs> right? Even if we have a lot of money, we would much <laughs> rather somebody else pay our bill. So it is true. But remember that Medicaid is for the indigent. It is for the poor. Now, there is a, a lot of technical um, uh, parts of what a, a person is, um, I'm sorry, uh, an indigent person or indigent person that is married, there's different levels of how much money they can have, uh, liquid assets, your house, your car. It's uh, kind of complex. I go back to that original or the last uh, question and my uh, discussion or conversation about uh, a long-term care, uh, I'm sorry, elder law attorney. You want to talk to those people or, or somebody in that business that can give you the correct information. Please, if if you take anything else away from here, if you have a need or you think there might be a need for long-term care, if you know somebody, make sure you're getting your information from the correct source. <clears throat> Everybody's situation is different. 
how much money they have, how much money they don't have, whether they own a house or don't own a house. All kinds of things come into play with uh, how you pay for long-term care. So make sure you're talking to the uh, a good source is to go right to the um, care facility because they have some one right there. That's all they do. And if you have uh, a possible need for that, or when your, your your spouse has a need for that in the near future, it doesn't hurt to go tour the facility and talk to them about that and see how much it costs. Uh, my wife and I did that for my mother-in-law. We toured several facilities to see what would be best for her dementia. And um, um, she actually is still getting dementia care six years later. And, uh, you know, she's been to different facilities because of different care needs that she's had over that time. And I, I've i lived it, and I understand how that works, uh, at least from a, um, a family member's perspective. But talk to an attorney, an elder law attorney, talk to the care facility, and even Department of Aging can give you some direction on that. Uh, if you feel like it's, you know, um, if, if you're already having money issues, they can help with that. They are that uh, public uh, entity that takes care of those things. So just remember that um, there are certain things you can do. And uh, when you go into a facility, it used to be we would plan before somebody went into facility. Now it's like after planning. So you find out they're go they're in a facility and then often often you're having those discussions and, and that's about what you can do. But there are things that you can do. The whole idea is before you might file for Medicaid, you want to make sure that your assets are in place to qualify immediately or as soon after that that you file that application. Uh, you don't want to file an application, and I'm I'm not speaking from my, you know, as a financial advisor, uh, less of a financial advisor, more you got to talk to the attorney about those rules because this is what I hear when I sit with clients in meetings with attorneys and they say this over and over and over again. Make sure you're talking with us before you file that application to make sure it's done correctly. And uh, many attorneys uh, will actually just charge a fee to do those filings every year for you. You just have to know what the rules are and how they're going to do it and what they're going to charge you and you accept it or you don't accept it. But there, you know, anything we do with the state or the federal government, when it comes to forms, it's very complicated. And most of us, even this guy sitting here doing the talking, I would not want to fill out one of those applications for me, for my family member or for a client. And it's not going to happen. I'm going to pay the money to have an expert do that. I think that's important to keep that in mind. Uh, the, the thing about Medicaid is, in reality, government programs do not help the average household pay for, like, long-sustained elder care or the expenses that come from it, right? So the financial responsibility largely falls on that person or that person's family. I say family, you know, the husband and wife, that that unit to take care of paying for your own care if you can. I have a few clients or, you know, just make, make something up. You know, you have a husband and wife that good pension, social security, and they might have some, you know, IRA or 401k income. And let's say their income's around a hundred thousand dollars. Well, I just gave you the number of about 90,000 as to what it costs in care facility, right? So most likely that couple, if they filed for Medicaid, they wouldn't qualify because they have too much income. So a lot of that income is going to have to go for that person's care. So for the person that's not in the nursing home, their lifestyle is going to change significantly. That's where you need to talk again to a financial advisor and that elder law attorney to help you through those things to see what your options are. I have uh, several clients that I, that is the example. So it is their huge, it's their biggest concern is, right, I'm going to have, I'm lose all what I've worked for in my life. But when it really comes down to it, they might be able to pay for most of their care, you know, in a facility. And then when you're private pay, boy, you got a lot of more choices probably, right? And then if the government's yeah, paying. Absolutely. So, but if you have any questions, call me, 265-3540. Good idea. Make the call. Get the information if you need it. Yes. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, John. That's Money Talk with Aaron Ricketts, presented by Ricketts, Ricketts & Associates, 3245 North Adrian Highway, Suite L. The opinions voiced on Money Talk are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. 
To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial Member FINRA SIPC. Join us once again next week for Money Talk here on 103.9 WLAN.